dear Lord, Father God in heaven, we come today, Lord, Father God, as living testimonies to your goodness, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you will do for us, Lord, Father God. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for your son, Lord, Father God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross, Lord, Father God, and died for each and every single one of us, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless us, Lord, Father God, that we might grow, Lord, that we might be able to serve you, that we might be pleasing unto you, Lord, Father God. We ask and pray, Lord, Father God, that you would protect us and protect our families, Lord, Father God, that you would bless us, Lord, that you would heal us, that you would continue to answer our prayers, Lord, Father God, with your unfailing love. This day, dear Lord, Father God, your Sabbath, we thank you, and we pray that you would continue to bless us, Lord. Let us open up our hearts and open up our ears that we might hear your word today, and Lord, Father God, that we might hold on to it and hold firm to the faith. I pray for each and every single person in here with their head bowed, Lord, Father God, and their eyes closed. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Bless you all for coming today. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Every day. Amen. Amen. As a child, I grew up in a Christian home. I don't remember life apart from doing things like going to church and praying with my parents and being with my parents daily on a daily basis in church. As I got into middle school and high school, I realized that I used to worry sometimes that my beliefs weren't really my own beliefs. They were my parents' beliefs. So as I grew a little older, I asked my parents if I could go on a little retreat on my own. They accepted it and let me go. And as I went through this journey on my own, I realized something. The first decision I made was to attend a leadership camp for myself, to get closer to God in my own walk. And this is important because the word today, God shows us each and every day that there's three th things that he always gives us. And this saying we all know comes from 1 Chronicles 14. Excuse me, 1 Chronicles 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away my childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we also see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and complete. So then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all is love. Faith comes first. As a child, my grandmother used to tell me that love is the most important. But without faith, you have no love. Without hope, you have no love. Let's take a look at faith first. Faith is God's chosen vehicle to get his salvation and his blessings to you in a controlled and legal way. We have the promises so that we might be partakers of God's salvation, characters, and his blessings. The purpose of salvation and the purpose of faith is to turn promises into reality. Faith is not a formula. He is a person. And at the end of the day, when your back is against the wall and you need God to move on your behalf, it comes down to just him and you, faith. See, nobody else matters. However, the more you understand and obey God's principles, the better your relationship is with him. And the better your relationship is with him is the more he will speak to you. And the more he speaks to you, the more you hear. At the end of the day, it boils down to just him and you. You and your relationship to him. Again, nothing else matters. Your relationship to him is shaped by how to respond to the principles found in the word of God. You living in him and him living in you. Through the word in you. His word is what binds us to each other. Faith is finding unity with God on a certain issue. Get personal with him. This is your own relationship with him and no one else. What you do today or even tomorrow matters. Faith is of the heart. There the world comes in. And it is deeply personal. You must have a personal faith with God. That's easy, right? Mm -hmm. And this personal faith 
based, excuse me, is based on a personal word from his personal God, usually pertaining to something deeply personal. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these, he has given us his precious and magnificent promise, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. And as you have escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Faith and believing are how we assess God and everything God has. In John 3.16, it talks a little bit about this, about talking about God loving the whole world. But it goes on to say that only believers would share it, his eternal life and he spared from judgment. That eternal life, by the way, starts now and not when we die. Through faith, we can share his eternal life, his eternal salvation, and eternal will. Now in this life, though, of course, in the life to come, through faith we can live in the benefits of his good eternal kingdom. Pretty easy having faith. Not as easy as think. That is why the Lord's Prayer states, Your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Again, one of the main purposes of our journey is to turn the promises of God into our earthly realities. They are always spiritual realities in heaven. The purpose of prayer is to make the will be done as it is in heaven. And the purpose of believing to get our prayers answered right. Mm -hmm. Let me state this. The purpose of our journey is to turn the spiritual realities of his promises into the physical realities of our life. God, can you do that when we believe his promises? Hmm, think about that. It is real, and he is real, though. We call this faith when it's real. Faith is what he does, not allowing us to see, but to believe. It is within us daily. We all need to make sure we carry this out daily at work, School, when we wake up in the morning, we really cannot bear the pain in our arms or our legs when we become blind. Faith is right beside us. God is our way, our light, and our truth. Think about this. Does God always require faith? Won't he waive the requirement for faith for things that are truly vital to those he loves? Isn't there a difference between critical needs and casual desires? Look at the world. Does it appear that God is responding based on need? or love? The answer is no. If he did, we wouldn't know it by what we see around us. What does his word say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. God loved the whole world, but we are expected to release faith in order to receive eternal life. And there's nothing more important to an individual than salvation. We all are salvation. If God won't make an allowance for this, then he surely will not make an allowance for other things. The simple truth is this. God does not differentiate. All things require faith. Let me say that again. In class, we learn how to differentiate a child how to treat them in their needs only. It's not like that with God. We all have one thing in common, faith. It all requires faith. We have this false notion that if God loves us and if he needs us for important enough, we think, if he, if he thinks we're important enough, he would answer based on his love. But if we pray according to that notion and the answer doesn't come and it won't, we become disappointed and confused. God, why didn't you give me that? Why didn't the answer come, Lord? Wasn't in his will? Doesn't he love me? Surely if he loved me, he would answer these, I asked him. Then we start to doubt his love and we think, maybe God doesn't love me. So why isn't he giving me this now? Maybe God wants me to go through this pain. Maybe God is a source of this pain. We are left when we confused. We see a lot of these. This confusion undermines trust in his love and character. We confuse God's love with how God works. Let there be no doubt, God does love us. 
But God is not blessed based on love alone. Yes, God gives graciously according to his love. But his justice requires that we receive according to our faith. Again, the truth of the matter is that God doesn't differentiate between needs or desires. Big things or small things. All things are to be received by faith. And are only to be received by faith. Not differentiate. God gives according to his love. But we receive according to our faith. How strong is this? This satisfies the love and justice of God Almighty. All things are required by faith. The image I wanted to proceed to you, what God had given me this week, my brothers and sisters, is God is standing with his hands stretched out full of blessings, ready to give them out. His face is radiant with love and acceptance. However, there is a chasm between you and him, a gap. When I was a little girl, I used to call it chasm. I laugh because I was telling Papa Bessie this morning about it. Because chasm is a gap. Didn't know this when I was younger, Christian, well, but I do now. Between you and him and that and chasm can only be crossed by faith. There are no other options and there is no other way. God is there waiting, but getting to him will require faith. Receiving faith then is the only obstacle. God and his blessings are on the other side of faith. His will for this world is on the other side of faith, my brothers and sisters. We must all travel the way of faith. We know some may get lost. As I look back in the Bible this, this morning even, I smile because if you look back in your Bible sometimes, you, you look at a lot of things and you see a lot of things that, you know, you look up and you say, wow, Lord. But as I was looking through the Bible, I started to see some things. 